Hi, everyone. I'm back working through again through the armor of God, which is in Ephesians 6. I'm going to read the whole passage right now, and then I'm going to go on to a, a new piece of armor. Okay. So we were in Ephesians 6, verse 10. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities in the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle, you will be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. So I had talked a little bit or looked at the belt of truth, which was that girdle that girds us and gives us that foundation. And then I, I looked at the breastplate of righteousness, which protects your heart and your emotions, the center of your body. That idea of being right with God is giving you that foundational um, rightness that, that makes you okay in your emotions. And then the, the, your feet shod with the gospel of peace, knowing that it's, it, it's the good news that propels us forward into action and gives us, uh, again, protects our feet so that we can go forward and do things. Um, and we don't have to be, we don't have to be, um, sitting home, you know, not going anywhere, not, not, not doing anything that might uh, be wrong, you know. No, we're, we're to go forward, you know, with these feet in, shod in the gospel of peace. And then uh, finally now, uh, we, we got up to the, uh, the shield of faith to get those fiery arrows that are coming at us, you know, to, to kind of protect us. And we talked about how the Roman soldiers would get into a circle and almost make like a little turtle shell with all of their arrows and protect themselves and protect each other. So this is the thing. It's a, this shield of faith not only protects us, but you know, we're to do that for others as well. Uh, we're to give them encouragement, not, not add to the, to the arrows, you know, because <laughs> sometimes we do that, don't we? And I was thinking about these flaming arrows that were coming towards us and I kind of did some meditation and kind of brainstormed a little bit of what what would I think these flaming arrows might be and I wrote down um, despair depression divorce anger lust temptation sickness jealousy uh, being offended by someone uh, being overwhelmed and stressed out thinking like you know one more thing that straw that broke the camel's back is that one arrow that I lower the shield and bam you know um, disappointments, I think, are, are arrows, betrayals, addictions, financial problems, uh, arguments. Uh, even the pandemic is a big, you know, arrow coming at us. And and so this, this shield of faith, we have the breastplate of righteousness here, but the shield of faith is for those extra little things that come along, you know, to, to kind of move that shield of faith wherever we need it. We have faith to protect us. So it's a very much of a a, a protection for everything for our whole body so that belt of truth is around our middle the the shoes of peace uh, the good news around our feet uh the breastplate of righteousness or the armor is over our hearts and then this shield of faith to protect any other little arrows that come here there and everywhere so the next one after that that they mention is the helmet of salvation so we've protected everything you know down but what about your mind what about your head? You know, this is where all of your thinking goes on, all of your um, cognitive ability. Boy, when you have a brain trauma, a head trauma, you know, everything is, is off kilter. There's so many of our functions that cannot happen if we don't have 
our brains operating the right way. So, of course, Roman soldiers wore helmets. And uh, in this picture, it's a, it's a helmet with a kind of a, I don't know, fan thing on the top, you know. And notice it has another piece down at the back here that protects his neck as well. And, and it protected their, the front of their heads. So this helmet of salvation, the idea of our salvation is to protect our minds. The mind is where everything starts, isn't it? The mind is where everything starts. It really is. Um, I had some other verses that I looked up. I don't know if I can find them. Um, but this idea of salvation is twofold. First of all, it's rescue. You know, that the, that the Lord rescued us. Jesus rescued us by going to the cross. He rescued us from what was our punishment, you know. And then the other part of it is really the restoration, the redemption of everything, you know. Uh, I think of it like, I was thinking, like, what about like a, um, you know, a police officer that arrests you for doing something wrong. Let's say you stole something or you, uh, you know, broke the law in some way, okay. The rescuing would be him if he brought you out of that and said, I'm not going to prosecute you. I'm going to give you a second chance. I'm going to I'm not going to write this up, you know. That's the rescuing. But the restoration would be not only that, I'm going to put you in a great program where you're going to have a place to live, you're going to have all kinds of abundance, you're going to have food, you're going to have shelter, you're going to have love, you know. That's the restoration. So the rescue is one thing. It's one thing to rescue us and then throw us back in, you know. It's another to rescue us and then restore us to this abundance and joy. So this helmet of salvation is protecting our minds by rescuing us, but then restoring our minds and giving us a, a, a way to keep our minds sound and strong. It's a, it's a freedom, really, a freedom. So let me look up a couple of um, verses that I had looked at when I was studying this. And let me see if I can find them first, because I should have had them looked up ahead of time, but I didn't. So let's, um, let's see. These are all uh, different things about the mind, okay? So the first one I, I looked at was in Proverbs. See if I can find it here. Proverbs 23. Oh, boy. Okay, Proverbs 23, 7. If you, if you have a Bible and you want to look it up, Proverbs 23, 7 says, um, oh, that's New King James. I want to look it up in the um, NIV version because I think it's a little bit easier to understand. Okay. It says, for he is the kind of person who is always thinking about the cost. Interesting. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Okay, so in the New King James Version, it says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Here they use the word heart, but for us, that, and actually they thought of, in that time period, they thought of your heart as the thinking area, but of course we think of our brains, really. We think of hearts as emotions and brains as thinking. So as you think, therefore you are. It's your brain that leads the way. Um, let, me, let me look at a couple of other verses about that. Uh, one that I wrote down was Isaiah 26. So let me see if I can find that one. Um, Isaiah 26, where are you? There we go. 26 verse 3. For you will keep in perfect peace... Those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. So God will keep us in perfect peace when our minds are set on him. Not on the problem. When our minds are at the problem, you know, we're, we're not peaceful. When our minds are on God, that doesn't mean we don't problem solve. It doesn't mean that. It means that we problem solve with the peace of knowing that God is in control. And that God will lead us and guide us to do the right thing. That we don't have to, you know, uh, fret about it and worry about it. And, oh, my goodness, and what's going to happen? And, oh, I don't know. And what about tomorrow? This is not being steadfast in the Lord. It's knowing 
God will give me the grace. God will give me the strength. God will give me the power. God will give me the answer. He will guide me in solving this problem. Okay, so as our minds stay steadfast in that, now our minds are free to operate and, and be okay with problem solving and all the rest. So it's when our minds are steadfast that God will give us peace. I love that one. Another one I looked at was Colossians 3 verse 2. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. So God is saying we have a choice. We always have a choice what to think about. I can think about the problem that I have with one of my children or the problem that I have financially. I can think about that and I can think about it and think about it, meditate on it really, you know? Or I can set my mind on the things above. God, I know you're there. I know you're protecting me. I know you have a plan. Let me rest in that plan and go forward with the action I need to take. So when we set our minds on things above and we're not focusing totally on the earthly things, we, you know, our minds are more uh, able to protect our actions and our souls. Um, so that, that one I really liked as well. And then there's another one which is in Philippians, um, and it's it's 7 to 8. I don't think I have 7 through 8, but I think I have 7, and then I have 8 in another place. So here's 7. And the peace of God, which trans transcends all understanding. Notice the peace of God. And how do we get the peace? Well, we get the peace by focusing on him. And then that transcends all understanding. Okay, we can understand things better when we focus on the peace of God. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, doesn't make any sense at all to be peaceful in a circumstance, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So this peace that we get from God by focusing on him will guard our hearts and our minds so we're doing the right thing. And then from a practical standpoint, that verse goes on in verse 8 to say, tell us exactly what to think about. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about those things. You know, we are in control of what we are thinking. And I love this, uh, there's a psychologist, a neuropsychologist called Carolyn Leaf, who's who's um, written several books about your brain. And she talks a lot about um, neuroplasticity, which is our ability to change our brains by what we think about. And, and that's, God knows that because that is how God created us. So then the Bible tells us exactly how to do that because this is the way we're created. Now, science is kind of showing us that that's true, which is kind of cool. And this is one thing that she has said. This is a quote from her. Through neuroplasticity, we have the power to wire our beliefs, our habits, and our mindsets into our brain. We also have the ability to wire out our toxic thinking, our toxic habits, and our past traumas. So if you are wanting to change a thinking pattern you have or truly believe a concept, you cannot think about it just once and have it stick. You must think, focus, and act upon it every day for at least two months. So she's saying it takes a long time, but you can rewire your brain. The implanted word will save your soul. If you truly want to believe what the Bible tells you, you need to meditate on the truth for at least two months to implant it into your subconscious. I love that idea, you know, that it's, it's this daily study of the word that becomes that helmet of salvation. We're secure. It's protecting our minds. And she talks a little bit about some of the things that we want to wire out. Here's what we don't want to meditate on. Worry, comparisons, criticism, an orphan spirit, meaning seeing the lack of what you have instead of seeing what you do have. Fear or trauma. Yes, those are part of life. But you don't want to sit and think about them over and over and over. You don't want to meditate on that. Here are some habits and mindsets that she says we should wire in. Mindfulness. In other words, being in the presence of God. Gratitude. Setting intentions for your day. Looking at each situation with a different perception. I like to think of seeing it from God's point of view. 
taking each thought captive. That's what the Bible tells us. Take your thoughts captive with a different perception. Optimism, seeing what you do like versus what you don't like about yourself, about the world, about your life, you know, just, just concentrating on what you do like. Uh, love, patience, you know. This idea of taking a thought captive is, is, is biblical. Um, I have to look up to see where that comes from because I didn't, I didn't look that one up. Oh, Corinthians 2, verse 5. It says, we take every thought captive. Okay? We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So if you have a thought of you're worried about something or you're upset about something, you take that thought and you say, Lord, this is what I have. Make it obedient to you. It's not a sin to have the thought. It is sinful then to meditate on that instead of giving it to the Lord. So um, that taking every take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. In other words, don't think a bunch of things without God in the picture. Bring God into the picture so that what you're thinking about is obedient to what Christ did for us. And what, and, and there again, that forms that helmet of salvation. And it says we need to put it on every day. It's not just going to be there accidentally. We need to decide that we're going to meditate on a verse. We need to choose. I was talking about this with someone today because I was talking about a person that had, um, they got mad at friends that they, um, that they golfed with, actually. And, and this man got very mad at something that was said. And he totally ostracized himself from that group. Now he won't play with them anymore. You know, who got hurt in this situation was him. You know, and that offense that he took, if he, I don't know if he's a Christian or not, if he, if he were a Christian and he took that offense to God and he said, Lord, help me deal with this. What am I going to do with this? I'm offended, you know. Maybe there might have been a lot of other choices that he could have made other than just pull out of that group and never socialize again with that group and, and, and lose the people that he used to go with once a week, you know? What else could he have done? You know, God might have shown him all kinds of other choices. He might have been able to just simply let it go and understand people make mistakes. He might have been able to pick out one person in that group that he could sit down and talk with. He might have been able to forgive those people. You know, he might have been able to to see them as not people he wanted to hang around with and maybe see a different group. God might have given him the gift of other friends. Who knows, you know? But just to get angry and meditate on that offense and say, these people, they shouldn't have said that, they shouldn't have done that, you know? When we meditate on that, our minds are open then to the work of the devil instead of the work of God. So this helmet of salvation protects our minds so that we could go to God and, and make every thought obedient unto Christ. That just protects us in so many ways. But it is a choice. When I get offended, and this just happened to me a little while ago, you know, I have to make a choice. I have to make a choice. I'm either going to focus on that or I'm going to take it to the Lord in prayer and ask him what to do with it. Because it hurts me, you know. When your emotions and your mind get get going, you can create all kinds of scenarios in your own head that, that lack truth and that certainly lack the obedience unto Christ. It's easy, easy to happen. So how do we protect ourselves from that is the helmet of salvation, that daily immersement in the word, that, that meditation to take time to pray and meditate and think about those things that were in Philippians. Not to think about the offense, but to think about beauty. What's good about those people? What have they done for me in the past? How can I be grateful for their friendship, even though in this situation they offended me? You know, And that doesn't mean I have to put myself open for more offense or more hurt. It does mean, however, that I need to forgive them and let God show me, do, do I go back into that group? Do I choose a different group? Do, are you going to send me in a different direction, Lord? You know, what do you want me to do with this? But so often we, we do it all ourselves and then we get ourselves in a pickle. <laughs> and we're in too deep and we can't get out, you know. That's happened to me many, many times. So um, what's left here 
is the uh, the sword of the spirit and then covering everything with prayer. And I'm going to go and be looking at that and doing some more verses and whatever about the sword of the spirit next time as I look at this. And then I'm going to be finished with Ephesians. So I hope you're having a great day today. And I, I, I would encourage you to put on your armor every day. Take care.